Christy with the Chirp YouTube channel. About a month ago, maybe a little more, I got a message from my sister-in-law, my brother's beautiful wife, mentioning that there was a child's family she knew that was asking her if her sister-in-law, me, a special ed professional, in case you don't know, I'm a speech language pathologist, and I'm a specialist in early childhood, especially developmental disorders, including autism, which is my very favorite thing to talk about and work on with families. So when she found out that that's what I did, she asked my sister-in-law a question about socks. Now you may wonder why did she ask this question? And if you have been following along with this channel for a while, you'll know I talk a lot about sensory disorders, sensory difficulties, sensory processing, different sensory quirks that we all as human beings display. And it turns out that clothing is a huge issue for a lot of people with sensory disorders, myself included. I n never got a diagnosis of a sensory disorder because when I was a kid, they just didn't exist. And so I just was a little bit weird and I learned to manage my stuff fairly well. I'm a reasonably successful human being now. However, those things really do inform some of my treatment methods today, which I think is a great thing. My sister-in-law happened to notice because we're fairly close and we have discussed quite often the sensory issues that my brother and I both faced and continue to face and dealt with in different ways because we are very different people. She happened to remember that I still dislike socks and I really disliked them as a child. <gasps> of course, growing up in the frigid cold of Minnesota, socks are kind of a necessity. <laughs> so this mother has a child now with a sock problem. She asked my sister-in-law, who then asked me, and I had never thought that this might be a topic that would help more people because it seems like such a very small topic in the huge scope of possible things to discuss. However, when I started returning the message, I realized I have so much to say on this topic. And over the years, I have found some things that really work for me. So I thought I'd share them with you as well, because I would imagine there are probably hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people out there searching for ways to help with their sock difficulties due to sensory disorders. Welcome to this video on socks. The first thing I want to say is, if you can get away with not wearing socks, don't wear socks. If you live in a warm place, as do I, I live in the Arizona desert in the Phoenix metropolitan area. And my goodness, my cat, one of my many cats, is choosing this point in time to play like a crazy wildebeest in the bathroom tub. And I can hear him thumping and thumping. I think there are some toys in there. So you might get to participate in that excitement with us. So fun. Aren't you glad you joined us today? Okay, back to socks. Socks. If you can get away with not wearing socks most of the year, as can I because I live in the desert, do it. Wear sandals. Oh, oh dear. I have to solve this cat related issue. It may have solved itself. We shall wait and see. Try to get away with not wearing socks. I have ballet flats that I like to wear that I don't wear with socks and I can wear them most of the winter because they do cover the most delicate parts of the foot and I have sandals that I can wear most of the winter in spite of the fact that my toes stick out. They still are okay except maybe for about three months. In those three months, Yes, I have to wear socks. And in fact, I've been dealing with the sock issue a little bit more than usual in the last, since April, because I had an ankle injury and then I had ankle surgery from which I am still recovering and going to physical therapy twice a week. And it's a really long process. 
but because I have to wear, first I had to wear a boot and now I'm wearing a brace and you have to wear a sock under those things. So I have had to wear socks more than I would throughout the summer and into this fall. And it hasn't been the most terrible thing because I have found some other coping mechanisms, which I am about to share with you. However, before I move on to suggestion number two, on the topic of not wearing socks, if you can, think about things like boot liners. If you live in a cold place where you do need something inside of your boot or your shoe, rather than a sock, which has seams and sometimes very uncomfortable fabrics, consider something like a boot liner. A boot liner is usually made of fleece or some kind of microfiber that typically would just go inside your boot to add an extra layer of warmth. But if you have a boot liner, the sock itself can be a little bit superfluous because you've got something in there that kind of serves that purpose. The one problem with this is of course the stink factor because if you don't wear socks the natural aromas of your foot can sort of percolate in whatever material your foot is going to touch. So the boot liner may have to be regularly washed as would a sock or a pair of socks. So don't just wear the same boot liner forever inside the boots all winter long and then be surprised if it smells like death because it will. It's gross. I've never done that. But before I knew better, I didn't wear a sock inside of my knee-high, humongous post-surgery, post-injury boot. And I was told you need to wear a tall sock in there because it will start to stink really bad. I believed it. I followed the rules and we are A-OK -okay now. While I am on the topic of boot liners, I want to say that I will put links to some products that relate to this talk down in the information box down below this video. So please go look there, buy yourself some things that will maybe work better for you or for your kid. I'm just going to assume in this video that it is you who is having the problem with the socks. But of course, apply this to whomever it is applicable. Okay. Number two recommendation I have for those of you who are sock sensitive is look for knit socks. Sort of like the old fashioned woolen socks, except for not woolen because wool is itchy and uncomfortable and terrible and it's bad for the sheep too, who knew? Don't buy wool socks. Don't buy acrylic socks. Buy knit cotton socks if you can. There's something about the way that the whole sock is textured rather than just the seam that helps your foot not be so sensitive. For example, this prop sock that I have right now, this is actually not a terrible sock, but I need to put it on so you can see. Most of the material is smooth, but the seam right here is not smooth. It's that difference between the smooth and the not smooth that for me, it causes a lot of the problem. This sock is textured on the body with these lovely dots. La la la, these lovely dots. I find those dots helpful because they distract my foot and my leg from the difference between this smoother part and the seamy part. So there's something about a textured sock that helps. Even better than a sock such as this would be a sock where the whole sock is knitted and there is no difference between the seam and the rest of the sock. It's all just that same texture. I find those socks really helpful. The best socks I ever found, I found in a random store on the street in Salzburg, Austria on vacation one time. And I bought, I think, two dozen pairs and brought them back to Arizona with me and I wore them for three years before they started wearing out. And what was awesome about them was that somehow they didn't seem to have a seam across my toes. And they didn't have a seam where the heel was. So the heel part didn't slip down into the arch of my foot because I have kind of small feet. And the seam part didn't wriggle around or press into the top of my toes either. They were magnificent. Of course, I can't go back to Salzburg every time I need a pair of socks or a dozen pairs of socks, but those were great socks. And I have found some 
on Amazon and in other places that I have linked for you in the information box. So please take a peek down there. Recommendation number three, pay attention to what the socks are made of. I know I'm not necessarily typical when it comes to sensory difficulties, but I don't like socks that are made from any sort of wicking material. I don't like clothing that's made from a wicking material either. It feels really gross to me. It feels kind of slimy and clingy and damp. And I don't like it. I especially don't like it on my feet. Ugh. Ugh. So buy cotton socks try to get as little polyester as possible in the mix that makes up the sock. If you can find pure cotton socks, that is all the better. It's much more comfortable on the feet and the texture is just so much nicer. I have written down, well, it, it's in a list on my phone, some terms that you might want to search if you are looking for socks that might work better for sock averse people. Consider terms such as running socks, because if you run a lot, you will know that chafing is bad, and so anything on your sock that might chafe is bad, so there are fewer seams and things like that, so running socks is a good option. Diabetic socks, you don't want your feet to be chafed if you are diabetic because you won't feel the wounds, and then you might get ulcers, and you might have to have your feet removed, and it's terrible. So diabetic socks is another good term to search. Seamless socks smooth seamed socks and sensory socks. Those are all some good terms to search for if you are searching for socks that might be better for a person who is sock averse. There are lots of new sensory type clothing lines coming out. I know Target even has some undershirts and stuff like that that are now seam free or tag free. I do also have a huge problem with tags. And I guess in this video, I might as well add a little bonus for you. A tag problem solution is to have some fabric tape, which is on one side, it feels like fabric and on the other side, it's tape. And you just put that tape over the tags in the back of the shirt. This solves a lot of my problems. Most of my shirts that have tags in the back also have tape on them. You gotta remember to take it off before you wash them, otherwise that adhesive can get on other clothes. And also if you have long hair, the hair will get stuck in the tape on the tag, on the shirt tag. So just kind of expect that you will have some little bald area underneath the back of your hair where it got trapped in the tape that you needed to put on your tag so that you could function throughout the day. Functioning is important. Being a member of society requires functioning, and we can't function very well if our sensory system is on edge. So we do what we can to mitigate those irritating factors in life, like itchy tags and socks that are annoying. <gasps> Just as a side story, by the way, I used to apparently spend five to 10 minutes in the morning trying to arrange my sock inside my shoe properly before going out the door to the bus stop. That makes me so sad for small Christy. That's a lot of stuff to handle for a small person. And so whatever we can do, whatever you are doing for the people in your life who have difficulties in this area, I appreciate you and I applaud you. Suggestion number five is to look for fleece socks. These are sometimes sold as slipper socks which is weird because you wear these as slippers, they get a hole in about a day because they're very thin and fleece is not especially resilient when it is slid around on the floor or walked on carpet with. That was a weird grammatical structure, but you get the idea. Fleece is the same texture all the way around and a lot of times it's made as a tube so it doesn't have a seam across the toes. Sometimes it has a seam. Let's demonstrate with our prop sock here. Most socks have a seam across the top of the toes. Some socks that are made more like a tube will have a seam here where the toes would sort of hit the front of the shoe if your shoe was too small. 
I should have used another color other than black and I probably should have used a sock that had visible stitching that was a separate color from the sock. But we live and we learn and I have lived and I have learned and in the next sock video that I do, I will choose a different prop sock. Fleece socks can have the an irritating seam around the tips of the toes. I find that much better than a seam that goes across the top of the toes. It's much less irritating, but it still can irritate. So try a couple of different brands of fleece socks. There are so many fun ones I found on Amazon and I'm going to link them below, of course, for you so that you can browse them and find fun ones that suit your fancy and suit your toes. Fleece socks, even though they are usually polyester, they're usually a fluffy sort of polyester and they don't cling tightly to the foot like a wicking fabric would. So I find them very easy to wear, much easier to deal with than a, a normal polyester sock would be. Sometimes they can get a little sweatier in warmer weather, but of course in warmer weather, why would you be wearing a sock at all if you can get away with no sock? Because no sock is always the best option if you can manage it. I do have students here in Arizona who wear flip-flops all year round to my program. Of course, most schools don't allow that. Um, a lot of my kids put their shoes immediately into their cubbies when they come in the classroom. And the goal is that this helps them to function better. It helps them to marshal all of their abilities and use those towards more important things than trying to manage the irritation that their clothing is causing them. Hopefully this video gave you some good ideas. Please don't forget to resource yourself with some better sock options from the information box down below. Most of those links will take you to Amazon and you will be able to furnish your sock drawer with lots of lovely options that will be less irritating to your beautiful feet. Thank you for joining this video and for hanging out with me today while I talked about socks. I hope you enjoyed it. This was one of my most enjoyable videos to make because it turns out I had so much to say about socks. I didn't even realize how much education I have gained in this area using my own self as the experimentee and my own feet as the judges of good socks and bad socks. So anyway, it was fun. Thanks for hanging out with me. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in my next video. Bye. How could you not like me, Christy? Your seams are just so annoying. It's not my fault, but there are better options. I could pick a better option than you. Your seam is just so big. Hmm.